the OCA staff were the first people to review the finalized answer sheets in the summer and fall. When we do, we'll look at whether there were any flags from your last visit. Then we'll read all explanations for any no or not applicable answers and flag any that don't provide enough information for us to understand your operation and why the standard isn't being met or doesn't apply. Answers written as not applicable will not be accepted as they don't provide any information as to why the standard doesn't apply. Then we'll track whether 100% of applicable mandatory standards and 90% of applicable recommended standards in each section are being met. The Standards Accreditation Committee uses the Visit Review Possible Outcomes PDF you received in your Visit Information Package as a guideline when they'll make the Visit Outcome Recommendations. Finally, we'll read all visitor and director feedback, so please fill out the feedback forms. If we have any questions, we'll follow up, most likely with the director. Senior visitors, your feedback form includes a section to evaluate any intro or junior visitor you may have had with you. Make sure you fill out that section too. Once we've finished the initial review and gathered up any follow-up documentation, the Standards Accreditation Committee will do a final review, follow-up if necessary, and make visit outcome recommendations to the Board of Directors using the Visit Review Possible Outcomes to help guide their recommendations. Follow-up could include asking for a letter of, res of response, which will require the Director to confirm that they will comply with one or more standards in which they are currently non-compliant or asking to provide further details as to why a standard is not and will not be met. Visit outcome recommendations can include, and are not limited to, re-accrediting an accredited member for one or four years, accrediting a provisional member for one or four years, revoking accreditation, remaining at provisional status, and assigning a mentor. There's always an appeal process available, which can be read on pages 13 and 14 in the introduction section of the standards document. For a revisit of any kind, which does not include provisional one applicants who have a provisional two visit the next year, a revisit fee to be charged $150. Reasons for the revisit may include, but not limited to, as to standards accreditation committee recommendations, a lapsed provisional or accredited member who rejoins after a period of time, and a change in the leadership or ownership. Visitors, when it comes to a visit outcome, it is not your responsibility to decide the outcome of the visit. If there are disagreements between you and the director, please let us know by filling out the feedback form and calling the OCA office. When will directors find out their visit outcome as approved by the Board of Directors? Well, most will hear back by the end of the calendar year as a target date. However, if by mid-December outcome letters haven't been shared, the OCA office will be in touch. Delays happen when camps and outdoor education centers are not in compliance with all applicable standards, if explanations to no and not applicable answers don't have sufficient detail, and if it is difficult for the Standards Accreditation Committee and the Office to get in touch with the Camp Director. When the Standards Accreditation Committee reviews answer sheets, they refer to this possible outcomes guide to base their recommendations, also found in the Standards Introduction. For each section where the number of applicable recommended standards has not been met, it will count as though a mandatory standard has been answered as no. For example, camps need to answer yes to 90% of all recommended standards in each section. In the Management and Administration section, this means camps can answer no to two recommended standards. If the camp answers no to three or more recommended standards in that section, the Standards Accreditation Committee will process that as an additional mandatory standard being answered as no. As a result, a P2 camp, for example, that answers no to three or more recommended standards in management and administration will likely receive a letter of response indicating they become accredited for one year once they provide a letter of response with a written commitment to comply with the recommended standards prior to next season.